Welcome to Insight Solutions. My name is Don Wolf. I'm with the uh, liquefier division and I'm the product line manager. And what we have beside me is the high speed liquefier, uh, the LOR WWSS model. And we want to be able to uh, show you some of the variations that we can add to this model and then also run some product today. This is an LOR WWSS model, one of our highest end models. It's a uh, high speed blender with a slow scraper agitator. And this particular unit has two jackets. It has a cone jacket and a sidewall jacket. We're able to use steam or hot water to heat the product, or we also could use cold water to cool the product to a desired temperature. It also has a, uh, a high speed impeller in the bottom and the high speed impeller can have different variations. Uh, we have a general purpose impeller. We have a high shear impeller. Uh, we can also blend powders. We can also blend uh, blocks of material like cheese blocks and butter blocks. Uh, this particular unit also has a scrape surface. So we can do dual agitation. We can blend at the same time we're blending below with the impeller. We can also blend with the scrape surface. And this particular model has a split level top. Uh, what that means is that it, the top com comes completely off. Um, so you can actually get free access to bring in your products into the product zone and be able to blend it. In this unit, we also have a, uh, a gear drive that we are using uh, with a particular stainless steel motor combination. And we're able to run a scrape surface agitator at 20 RPMs. This allows you for uh, to prevent burn on if you're heating, and it also helps you with slow agitation. So we use the combination. It also comes in handy for high viscosity product. This blender is, uh, is capable of uh, heating and cooling. So uh, what we have here is a dual jacket combination and we're going to make an icing today or a glaze. And in the sweet good business or the industry, uh, we're able to actually make the uh, icing in here and actually cut about one third of the blend time using a liquefier to, uh, to accomplish that task. And with icing formulas, we, we have an extra couple features that we can add to the blender. Uh, this particular unit can cook and cool, which is a great feature, but we also can add uh, a jacket to it to where you actually have plumbing to where we can control the steam coming in and we can also uh, control the uh, time of temperature of the particular product. So with an icing, we can use a combination of the liquefier, a control system that is a programmer that we can set up to uh, actually activate a gum or a, an auger. Um, and we also can uh, control uh, multiple steam valves, uh, not only for the steam flow, but also for bleed off. On this specific unit, we have, uh, we have an actual steam valve that we will control through our PLC program and we're able to actually uh, uh, turn it on to a uh, set PSI, which we'd like to try to run it at 50 to 90 PSI steam rating. And then we also would like to go ahead and run it for a certain length of time. So our program, we can set up to be able to actually go to a particular temperature in the, in the product zone. And we are able to also be able to control the uh, the uh, temperature throughout that uh, three minute timer. Behind the unit, we have a steam valve that we, that's air actuated that we're gonna be able to control. And when we're done heating, we're, a, we're able to turn that off. And then we're able to turn two bleed off valves on to bleed off our condensate. So with any type of jacket in the industry, you, you wanna try to eliminate um, any type of condensate. And so when we do that, we, we actually have two open valves that we will open for a certain length of time to bleed off the condensate. And then we're able to go ahead and make our next batch. So you see here a, a PLC program that we've developed uh, utilizing our liquefier, uh, jacketed uh, valves that we can control the heating and cooling of a product. And we could also could control uh, valves uh, outlet valves and also pump. If you push the overview, you're, you're able to look at actually a completed cook cycle. Uh, you're able to actually look at your amps, your RPMs of each motor 
Uh, you're also able to see actually or uh, see your steam valve in action if it's actually running during the time that you look at your overview screen. If you go back to the main menu, we have different uh, different opportunities to go through different screens. Uh, this particular screen is our cook cycle. We could have a combination of one to five of these um, for setting up for different formulas. And uh, what's important for us is to be able to change the cook temperature. Uh, you're able to actually go in here and change the, the cook temperature for a particular formula. And then you're able to actually change the enter cook time. Uh, you can go in here and enter it and it changes your cook time. Uh, when you're ready, at some point, you're, you can actually start your cook cycle. We also have a bleed off. Uh, bleed off means that you're opening two steam uh, condensate relief valves that are in the back, uh, and you're able to adjust how long they're open, and that allows you to bleed off any condensate out of your system, and it protects your, uh, your equipment. When you're ready, you can go ahead and push start, and that goes through the cook cycle. And at the same time that you're doing this, you can adjust your, your start and stop um, on, on each one of your drives. So on this particular screen, we're able to actually adjust your speed. You can start and stop your impeller. Uh, it actually shows amps and the speed that you're running. Uh, the other side, you can, you can actually start your scraper. You can run it forward and reverse. Um, you can start and stop it. So there's a good combination of what you can do while you're blending your product. And then when we're ready, when we've already sent, uh, set up our uh, cook temperature and we've set our cook time, we can go ahead and actually start a cook cycle. When you're ready to run your cook cycle, you push start and it actually opens up a steam valve in the system and uh, you're able to actually bring in live steam through the jacket and to be able to cook your product. And you'll see here, this is the temperature of the uh, product that's in there currently. And uh, we're going to get to this temperature. And once we get to the cook temperature, the cook time will start for a certain length of time. And you'll notice a countdown, countdown timer that will begin uh, to show us uh, how much time we have left on the cook time. In this particular steam valve, it actually shows us a gauge on how, how much the steam valve is open during the cook cycle. During a warm cycle, you'll see it at a, uh, a lower opening uh, at 50% instead of 100% because we don't want to go over our, cook, our uh, warm stage temperature. When we're done here, we can actually stop and go to a warm cycle, which you may see. We're going to go back. i got to turn off something first. Uh, I'm going to stop our cook cycle prematurely because we're running through this video. So at the end of our cook cycle, uh, we go ahead and bleed off for 20 seconds and then we're able to actually go to a warm cycle or a different screen where you can actually go to this uh, screen and, and be able to adjust your, your temperature. So if you're ready, you can uh, go in here and you can change to a temperature that you want to maintain your product at and you set that, let's say, at 125, and then when you're ready, you can push your button and start warming, and it'll modulate your uh, steam valve at about 50% open, so we don't, go, we don't go over our particular set point. Um, and so we've got two stages. We've got the cook cycle, and we also have a warm cycle uh, for this particular PLC program. Uh, we also have alarms that we can set up. Uh, alarms could, could mean that you you have a door that's open um, that you need to reset it. You, can, you have a safety reset that you can reset. Um, and you can actually see an alarm history. If, uh, for instance, this shows a cook tank back lid emergency stop. And we also have help screens that you can go in and you may be able to go through and see if there's a fault on a particular motor uh, or a bleed off valve. You can go in here and and actually monitor your, uh, your, your blender and see where, where you're at. So uh, we have different cook cycles. You can have different recipes for different uh, products. If throughout the day you're not, not just making one product, but you might be making a combination, 
uh, you might have different set points. So you may have a cook temperature that's different, a uh, cook time that's different. So you're able to actually go through certain recipe screens and to monitor and actually adjust uh, your, your cook time set points, or you can just go to a different recipe. So if you can, we have recipe one and two in this particular program, and we can set up more recipes, more detail. Uh, we can actually uh, uh, allow it to control more than what we have here. But on this particular uh, combination, we have a cook and cook cycle and a warm cycle, and we have two recipes. Um, so we can create uh, multiple recipes. Okay, we've got here an actual program that uh, we've uh, created uh, using an icing formula and uh, using a combination of our high-speed liquefier. It's an LOR WWSS model and it also has a jacket and, and also steam valves to be able to control it. We're using this PLC program. It's a touchscreen program and we're able to be actually touch it and be able to go through the different screens to, to allow us to implement all the functions of the liquefier. The overview just shows the liquefier in a certain stage and it actually shows amp load of our motors so we can actually see if it's running uh, even in this particular screen. Uh, but it also will show you uh, steam valve open, uh, being open or closed and it'll, it'll show you the actual blender. And up here it actually shows a, a cook cycle uh, being completed. So if you go back to the main menu, um, we have different uh, alarms that can be set up. Um, if you accidentally open one of our screen doors, you um, you're actually you may set off an alarm. And when that happens, uh, it shuts uh, your power down to give you some protection. Uh, we also have some other alarms that we can set up uh, we also have an alarm syst uh, history of uh, this particular model. We have different stages of when we're making an icing. Uh, one of the first stages is the, is the cook cycle, uh, which we could set up a recipe that has a combination of a cook cycle, and uh, it allows us to function throughout the time that we're heating uh, by controlling the uh, con uh, impeller speed and also the scraper speed. So down here, as you can tell, we have a cook tank VFD impeller. Um, you can actually start the impeller by pushing start and stop, and you can adjust your speed of that impeller. The other side here shows the scraper assembly, and the scraper assembly is actually the slow agitator that we're, we're helping to not only move the product, but to prevent burn on during the cook stage. Uh, we're actually able to start and stop, and we can even forward and reverse that particular scraper drive. Up here, we can actually go in and change the uh, cook temperature. So with an icing, uh, what we have to do is find out what activates a stabilizer. What activates an auger is what they call it. And it depends on the formula depends on what you're trying to do. You can make an icing, you can make a glaze. Um, so when you, once you figure out your formula and how you want to approach it, you can go in here and actually change your cook temperature. And so when we set up most of the time for icings and glazes, you're going to probably have uh, a 200 deg uh, degree to a uh, 212 degree uh, range that you may set a particular uh, recipe up with. So if you want to, you can, you can actually adjust it and then it'll show your uh, actual cook temperature there. And at that point, we know that we're set for that, that particular batch that we're going to run. On the other hand, we can actually take and change the time that we're doing our rolling boil. And so when we do that, we can set the minutes. Um, and this says three. We can also change it and make it into two and it'll actually have our cook time set for us to run the icing formula. And so that's pretty simple, it, it, and, we, and we're able to actually go through. You can change these from batch to batch, depends on the formula that you want to blend. Uh, the other thing that's uh, great about this, it'll actually show you your steam valve gauge, and so you're able to, to watch it and make sure that you know that it's heating, heating throughout the project. Um, we also have a start cook cycle 
what actually allows us to open up our steam valves. And the steam valves are, a uh, steam valve is behind the blender and uh, we're able to actually open up to 100% to where we can cook to a rolling boil. And uh, you can actually hear some of the steam, uh, steam going right now. And what will happen is, if our, if our temperature currently is 106 degree F, we're actually opening the valve to 100% open. And when we push start, it's actually uh, starting to warm up the blender or the formula, the product that you have in it, it's actually warming it to, from 106 to 205 degrees. And so at 205 degrees, it will start this, this enter cook time of two to three minutes. And so at the end of that two to three minutes, it'll actually turn off the steam valve and then you'll actually hear two open valves in the back um, drain the condensate um, out of the system. And that does two things. It prevents hammering in your blender, uh, in your jacket, and it also helps to actually cool down the vessel a little faster by relieving some of the condensate. Then, at that point, we're, we're actually completed with the cook stage and we can add the remaining ingredients. Um, so after we add the remaining sugar, flavors, oils, um, you're probably looking at a finished product. But this finished product may be at 130 to 150 degrees and you may not want to transfer it over to your hold tank uh, and you, until you're ready. And so you may want to maintain your temperature in here. And instead of doing a cook stage, we actually can go to a warm stage and we can enter your warm temperature uh, immediately we can, we can put in your, your 225 degrees, whatever temperature you would like, and then we can actually start the warm stage. And you can enter it just like we did earlier, and it'll change it if you'd like to have that changed. And then you can go ahead and, and, and go ahead and do your warm cycle. And you can maintain your warm cycle for a period of time until you're ready to transfer it to your hold tank. And so let's say that you have 800, 900 pounds in here in a 100 gallon blender, you're going to be able to transfer this now uh, by opening up your outlet valve and your pump and transfer it over to a hold tank in which we also provide hold tanks and you'll maintain a temperature over there and that allows the operator to come back in and make the next batch. So he'll transfer the, uh, the, the contents over to the hold tank and then he'll go ahead and start his next uh, batch in the liquefier and we redo the whole purpose, uh, purpose of doing our rolling boil, our cook cycle, and then we can also maintain our temperature here. Um, and then you might ask, okay, what are we doing with an icing and a glaze? Uh, we're, we're actually transferring it to a hold tank or we can transfer it over to a, an applicator.